Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? Good, Brian. Rich Strike supposedly up to uh, Belmont Park yesterday evening, and that means we are getting much, much closer to the Belmont Stakes and that wonderful card. Yeah, that's 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 a big part of it, isn't it? Uh, you know, wh whether you like the fact that races like the Met Mile were moved to be part of the Belmont Stakes card or not, it, it, the truth is the Belmont Stakes card is one of the best of the entire year. And Matt, we're going to talk a little bit more about the card later in the show. But right now, we're going to get more into our Belmont Stakes co coverage, the final leg of the Triple Crown, one point. Five million dollars, 1.5 miles, once around Big Sandy at Belmont Park, Matt. Uh, I, I made some odds up here for the race, Matt, uh, that you helped me with, and uh, we're projecting Mo Donegal will be the favorite. It's not a, it's not written in stone that he's going to be the favorite, but uh, this is how the field may look. Howling Time is a new addition uh, in the last week, as Dale Romans, after his recent allowance win, has said he is a possibility for the Belmont Stakes. And one thing I'm interested if Howling Time is indeed in the race is he can add just a little bit of speed into a race that doesn't look like it has a whole lot of speed. Yeah, that's true, Brian. And and Dale Romans always likes to ship up to New York and take a shot in the big races. Yeah, yeah. So uh, every reason to believe that Howling Time may mm -hmm. in fact uh, be in the race and may be the one who can... Uh, uh, make we the people whose second choice on these morning lines work a little bit early. Rich Strike is certainly hoping so. The connections of Rich Strike there, we have enlisted Kentucky Derby winner as the third choice, Matt. They're hoping that they can get some sort of pace because I think he is a horse that, uh, well, we saw what he did in the Kentucky Derby with a little bit of pace. So if he gets no pace in the Belmont, I think that's going to make life a little bit tougher for Rich Strike. Creative Minister next, uh, good third in the Preakness last time. Nest, the Philly, the lone Philly. Once again, we have a Philly as we did in the Preakness. Nest is the fifth, likely fifth choice here at 10 to 1. Got some long shots after that. Ethereal Road and Barber Road at 15 to 1, along with Skippy Long Stocking. And then, uh, then some horses who have won some allowance races recently. Howling Time, Kuchar, Golden Glider was well beaten on a wet track by We The People in the Peter Pan, Matt. Without further ado, you ready to go to our top contenders? Yeah, let's go ahead. You're ready? Okay, well, here are our top contenders. And to no surprise at all, I guess those are the first four on the odds board. But I, I think for lack of a, uh, a better way of stating it, Matt, I think these are the uh, four most likely winners. Let, let's start with the Kentucky Derby winner, though, Mark. Matt. Rich, Rich Strike uh, has probably done everything right other than uh savaging the outrider and and the, and his pony but ever since that kentucky derby win shocking kentucky derby win matt rich strike has done an awful lot right uh they skip the preakness so they can bring a relatively fresh horse to the belmont stakes a mile and a half and he continues to work very well he certainly I mean, I, I, I don't know how many of our fans saw that last workout uh, that he had a Churchill Downs before he headed to New York, that workout that they had between races uh, um, on at, on the card at Churchill Downs, which meant that the, the track was uh, race day fast and, you know, a, a lot of attention, a little bit of a weirder situation, him being alone out there uh, uh, on the track and, and, heading over in the afternoon, a lot of things for a horse that, you know, we saw, as you mentioned, Brian, after the Kentucky Derby win uh, is a, can be a pretty darn high strung horse, but he looked really good uh, out there on the track for that workout. He looked good heading out there. He's a spirited horse. He's a big, strong horse, um, flashy looking and, did everything right. So um, he real positive things for Rich Strike and from the Rich Strike camp um, as he heads to the Belmont. Yeah, I think there are plenty of positives for Rich Strike. Obviously, the distance uh, would be, he'd be one of the horses that you'd pick out on pedigree and how he's looked in his races as a horse who could handle 10 furlongs. 
I, I question whether the Belmont is is won by true 12 furlong horses anymore, Matt. I, I think maybe often the Belmont is won 10 furlongs into the race, and then it's just a, uh, a run out to the wire, if you will. But uh, he's certainly got the pedigree, smart strike uh, on, on both sides. He's inbred, in fact, pretty uh, pretty severely. Uh, but uh, there's distance on both sides of his pedigree. Um, certainly in the Derby, he looked like a horse who could handle more distance than the 10 furlongs of the Kentucky Derby. And uh, now he comes uh, to the Belmont after skipping the Preakness. Uh, probably, as it turns out, you know, a lot of us wanted to see the Derby winner in the Preakness. It's the Triple Crown after all, but probably first chances in the Belmont Stakes. Skipping the Preakness was a very good thing for him. I will bring up a couple negatives. Uh, first off, his two wins, his only two wins, his Arguably, his best two races both came at the same track, Churchill Downs, and that's where we're seeing a lot of these really good workouts for Keno Ice. So Belmont is a very different track than than uh, uh, Churchill Downs is. And the other negative, I think, Matt, is is the drastic pace scenario difference we're going to see from one to the other because Rich Strike looks like a horse who really has no early speed. And he is going to be uh, uh, off this pace. And he, I tell you what, if he's within four lengths early, I, I, I don't know if that that's a good thing. That takes him out of his game. But on the other hand, if they run 114 early, I think that makes it a lot harder for him to uncoil a big rally in this Belmont Stakes. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And, and you know, as you alluded to a little bit when you were running down the, the Horse Racing Nation odds, possible for the Belmont stakes. Um, yeah, we, the people, uh, won the Peter Pan with a front end front end effort on a sloppy track, but that doesn't mean that if he is the pace setter and you mentioned howling time also as one that would want to run out there, either one of them, they're not going to set those kind of fractions that we saw in the Kentucky Derby. They are not speed balls by any manner, any manner. There are horses that prefer to be out front and, and it probably will be a fairly casual uh, pace in the early fractions, but who knows? Yeah, casual. Uh, well, we know it won't be anything like the Kentucky Derby. It's a matter of it's going to be 112 and change or if it's going to be closer to 115. But I think casual is a good word, Matt. And I think that brings into question the Kentucky Derby winner's ability to win the Belmont. Uh, next on the list, Matt, we should go to the favorite. The horse that we've designated as the favorite is Mo Donegal. I, I, I'm not uh, so sure before this horse came along. You know, Uncle Mo has been a a very good sire, but I'm not sure that I would have been pinpointing an Uncle Mo as a real potential Belmont winner. But everything this horse has done in his career, he looks like he wants a distance. He's got some pedigree breeding on the other side and uh, looks like a horse who, who should be right at home in a mile and a half. He's got two graded stakes wins at New York already. Uh, he's not quite as dropped to the back of the pack and just make one run as Rich Strike, although Lately, he's been more like that than not. Uh, Mo Donegal looks like a pretty, uh, a, a pretty clear horse to to designate here as the favorite, a pretty deserving favorite, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, Brian, and you know, certainly a horse that you know, if you're going through the the possible uh, runners for the Belmont Stakes, he's certainly right at the top of the list as one that the mile and a half is, is is not a question mark. There are certainly others in the field where I'm like, really, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't care where they are in the pace. They're going to have trouble getting that, uh, that mile and a half trip around Big Sandy at Belmont Park. And it certainly helps that uh, uh, we know he likes the New York style racetracks. He's going to be racing out of his own stall, trained by Todd Pletcher, who has had so much success in the Belmont Stakes, a lot of positives. I thought he ran pretty well uh, in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, there are others that I've heard that feel that were disappointed in his performance, but again, he got pretty far behind uh, in the Kentucky Derby, and like you said, uh, um, I don't think he's going to let, you know, that kind of distance happen that he has to make up in the Belmont. 
Oh, yeah, I agree with that, Matt, 100 percent. I don't think Mo Donegal will be as far back in the Belmont Stakes as Rich Strike will be in the Belmont Stakes. And I think Mo Donegal won't be anything in the uh, neighborhood as far back as he was in the Kentucky Derby. Bottom line for me, with the Kentucky Derby, if you look at Rich Strike, Mo Donegal, and maybe even Barbara Road, Matt, it is the trip. Rich Strike was the one that was able to save ground. Uh, and running that wide in that mile and a quarter Kentucky Derby, we've seen it time and time again. It just doesn't work. Mo Donegal was down on the inside and he swung way wide for the drive. If you look, though, if you look at the last 100 yards of the Kentucky Derby, Mo Donegal is a horse that was finishing as well as anyone in that Kentucky Derby, even the horses that were, were rallying a bit, uh, a save rich strike. But Mo Donegal was finishing off that Belmont Stakes well as he's finished off every single of his race as well. So Mo Donegal. A deserving favor. We need to talk about We the People because I think We the People is a horse who is going to get bet here in the Belmont Stakes, and I think there's every reason in the world to bet him. He's got some positives and his negatives too, Matt. But we've already talked about the speed a little bit. I love the fact that We the People has a nice win over the track at, at Belmont Park, and like I said, Belmont Park is a different track than Churchill Downs or certainly a lot of others, Pimlico too. So the fact that We the People has a nice win, it came over a wet, sealed surface on Peter Pan Day, and it certainly didn't come against the competition that he'll find in the Belmont Stakes, but it was a nice win over the track, and, and that helps. Yeah, it certainly does, and it also helps. He's trained by Rudolph Brissett, uh, former assistant uh, for Bill Mott, so he, he, he knows... Brissett knows his way around Belmont Park as well as any of the trainers in the field. He knows what it takes to be successful on the mile and a half track at Belmont Park. And, and those are all positives. I agree. You know, certainly uh, uh, the victory uh, in the Peter Pan uh, is another positive question marks from the fact that it was on a sealed track. It was on a sloppy track. Um and we'll have to see how that translates to, uh, and well, we'll see. Who knows what the, the weather's going to be in another week or so for um, uh, uh, for We the People. But a horse that, you know, with that Peter Pan effort says, hey, um, I could be getting better and this could be the right spot. Yeah, a, a couple of points I want to make about We the People, Matt. Uh, people downgraded the Peter Pan, the 10 plus length win in the Peter Pan because it was a wet and sealed track because the competition was a little light in, in that Peter Pan. But a win over the track and bottom line is he ran a very good race. He ran 148 and change uh, for nine furlongs in the Peter Pan. He dominated the race from wire to wire. Uh, you know, I don't I don't care if there was better competition in there. He probably would have won by less lengths, but it was a very nice performance for the We the People. Now, we do need to talk about the Arkansas Derby because you look at We the People's uh, record, the Son of Constitution out of a Tisnow mare. There's some distance there as well in his pedigree. Uh, really ran a clunker in the Arkansas Derby. And, and if you look at his record, he's got four races and three nice wins the maiden the allowance people really liked him going into the arkansas derby and then he he acted up before the race he uh he looked a little bit rank during the race he was uh well wide into the first turn and then, and then he really didn't have much after that so what will we see in the belmont stakes in front of uh in front of a pretty big crowd at belmont park will we see a horse that is not quite ready for prime time or uh, will we see the horse that seemed to settle down really well for the peter pan that's that's a big question yeah and 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 all fair questions and brian you know if we're talking about a horse that is potentially going to be the second choice uh worth considering worth considering all right another worth considering top contender here, Matt, is Creative Minister. And I, and I think I like this on a creative cause more and more as time goes by. By the way, uh, Creative Minister is a son of Creative Cause, who was a very nice horse, retired after running third in the Preakness uh, several years ago, uh, is a son of Giants Causeway, who I think has a ton of uh, uh, distance influence in, in his sons and daughters and grandsons and so forward. But Creative Minister is also a grandson of Tappet on the other side, a well-bred uh, broodmare. Is, she's a daughter of Tappet. So Creative Minister has a lot of uh, distance pedigree in his uh, background, but he doesn't have a lot of experience, Matt. And for him to run third in the Preakness 
uh, where he had never been more than a mile and a 16th before, where he had never been in a stakes race, let alone a graded stakes race, let alone a triple crown race. And he had just debuted uh, in March. So he's come a long way in a short amount of time. And creative minister, I thought, ran a very good race in the Preakness, considering now he'll be asked to do it again in the Belmont. Yeah, I agree. It's come a long way in a short amount of time. And and and, and that indicates that this is a this is a good horse. And, and I kind of feel the same way that I'm liking him a little bit more and more. Trainer Kenny McPeak, of course, is a past winner of the Belmont Stakes back in 2002 with the long shot uh, Sarava. Um, the other side of that same discussion about uh, creative minister's record is, uh, yeah, it's come a long way uh, since March, but already now we're talking about packing in a uh, you know, in today's world of racing, a lot of starts in a short amount of time and now getting asked to go a mile and a half. Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's the issue, because like I said, he didn't debut till March and now this is June. So within three months, he's going to be asked to run his fifth race and his second triple crown race. And if you will, Matt, he's at his own triple crown. He's the horse who's run on Kentucky Derby Day at Churchill Downs when he won an impressive right. allowance race. Obviously, he ran in the Preakness, and he'll be in the Belmont. So basically, you know, that allowance race was nothing as far as the uh, amount of wear and tear that a 20-horse Kentucky Derby field. But he's run on Derby Day at Churchill Downs in the Preakness and now in the Belmont. One thing I, I kind of like about him a little bit too, Matt, yeah, McPeak has trained a Belmont winner before. That's a good sign. But also, he clearly has more speed than Rich Strike and Mo Donegal. He can pass horses. But he should be closer to the pace than you would expect Rich Strike, especially, and Mo Donegal as well. So maybe another thing in the side of uh, Creative Minister. Matt, this is a top contender, top long shot show. So let's jump into the long shots here. Uh, we've identified three that Matt and I thought had a shot to win. Probably the other four horses on the list now because we're going through seven out of 11, Matt. The other four horses would be pretty shocking to Matt and I if they won the Belmont Stakes. But these three, we think there's reason to believe that they could win. Matt, you want to start with Barber Road, who's been a pretty darn consistent rallier. Yeah, Barber Road has absolutely been that. Uh, from uh, four starts on the Oaklawn Park uh, Road to the Kentucky Derby, where he just kept coming down the stretch. In every one of those races, getting a bunch of second place finishes, picking up a lot of points, picking up a lot of money, and kind of did the same thing in the Kentucky Derby, Brian, where he finished uh, where he finished sixth. Um, and and I thought another good effort. He runs that same kind of race consistently. It wasn't just at Oaklawn Park. He brought it to Churchill Downs. Um, and now he's going to come up to New York for the uh, Belmont Stakes. Um, you know, no reason to not expect him to run well again. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Matt. Uh, in, in fact, I'll, I'll go a step farther with this. If we're calling Mo Donegal the, the likely favorite or a deserving favorite in the Belmont, and Barbara Road, uh, double digits, certainly 15 to 1 here on these odds, maybe even higher in the Belmont. Uh, their race in the Kentucky Derby was pretty darn similar. Uh, Barbara Road and, and Mo Donegal did a lot of running together in that race, honestly. Uh, they finished fifth and sixth rallying. Both of them went way wide. Certainly, Barbara Road went way wide as did Mo Donegal. Uh, maybe Mo Donegal was finishing a, a hair faster than Barber Road down the lane, but uh, like you said, another consistent rally for Barber Road. And if you if you really like Mo Donegal in the spot, take a look back at the Kentucky Derby where those two were together for much of the race. Uh, Barber Road, an interesting long shot. I will say too, tap it blood, Matt, tap it blood. We know how well Tappet Blood has done in the Belmont Stakes, and he's a grandson of Tappet being by race day, that young sire race day. So Barber Road, a potential horse. Maybe we're thinking more for the exotics as a long shot than the win, but Barber Road is a horse that we both would not be surprised to be rallying and running a good race in this Belmont Stakes. Ethereal Road is a little bit more of a, uh, a, a quandary for me, Matt. I, I'm not sure what to think about Ethereal Road. I've seen horses like this 
uh, do well in the Belmont. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think he had the very best of trips in the Bluegrass or even the Lexington, uh, but I didn't think he had the best of trips in the Sir Barton, and he still won that easily. I, I think the Sir Barton was a weak race as stakes races go, but Ethereal Road certainly looked good doing it. D. Wayne Lucas certainly knows how to get a horse ready for the Belmont stakes. Is Ethereal Road too cheap to win the Belmont, or is he is he someone that we should be talking about as a live long shot? Um, I think both of those both of those are possible. He might just be too cheap, you know. Talking about that, Sir Barton again. Uh, yeah, he he clearly won, ran a winning race in there. Uh, uh, going down the stretch, he just handled that field so easily. But it is worth noting that the Sir Barton is a restricted stake a stake that was restricted to horses who have not, who had not won a stakes race in their careers. So to specify a little bit more about uh, why the Sir Barton field uh, uh, is weak compared to the kind of races that the other horses in the Belmont might've been in like the Peter Pan and, 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 and such, but it is Lucas and, 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 and ethereal road look good but um again we're back to open company and, and triple crown quality horses right right and and that's that's the question for ethereal road because in the bluegrass uh banged around a little bit wide a little bit but he he flattened out and the lexington wasn't a super race either before that though he was uh involved with barber road he was in that revel with una ho ho and barber road and he he actually looked like a winner at one point in the stretch, uh, ended up splitting them. Three horses were close at the Wairun Ho Ho, Ethereal Road, and Barber Road. So if you're liking Barber Road, maybe Ethereal Road, coming off that Sir Barton win. Matt, remind me, we're going back almost 20 years, but you remember what race Sarava had won before he won the Belmont at odds of 70 to 1, I bet. It, um, well, off the top of my head, Brian, which one was it? It was it was the Sir Barton. It was the Sir Barton. Ah. Of course, that's that's the only reason I mentioned it, Matt. Because <laughs> yeah, Sarava seventy to one won the Belmont coming out of the Sir Barton. Oh, nearly twenty years ago, and now we have, uh, or maybe it was twenty years ago, yeah. right. and now we have uh, Ethereal Road coming out of the Sir Barton as well, Matt. Uh, looking down the list of long shots, I'm not sure that she's a true long shot. I could see her being. I like her as the fifth choice. I don't think any of the long shots will be that below her. I, I don't think she's below any of the top four, but I could see Nest hovering somewhere between eight and 12 to one here in the Belmont. Uh, people do like to bet the Philly as we did losingly in the Preakness with uh, Secret Oath, the Philly that beat her. But Nest, Nest got a spot here because she's 10 to one on the morning line. So that's enough for us to call her a long shot. And of the 11 horses, as I said, Matt, this this would be the other one that I think wouldn't shock me if she ran a big race or perhaps even won the Belmont Stakes. Right. And it's a, it's Todd Pletcher. And of course, uh, you know, Nest may take a little bit more action because uh, Pletcher did win the Belmont Stakes with Rags to Riches back in 2007. Um, in, in Historically, Brian, 23 Phillies have run in the Belmont Stakes, and only two have been victorious. So it's not an easy thing to do. Um, Ness looked good in the Kentucky Oaks when she was second behind Secret Oath. Um, she, you know, ran ran late, a nice steady late drive, and she was gaining, frankly. She was gaining on Secret Oath uh, as they approached the wire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we are comparing uh, different things here, and a, and a lot of these horses, especially in this race, more than probably the first two legs, are coming out of different races. We got the Peter Pan, we got the Derby, we got the Preakness, we got the uh, uh, Sir Barton, and, and now we talk the Kentucky Oaks again. And if you just look at, at, on the surface of Ness performances, in the race before the Kentucky Oaks, the Ashland, even the race, the Sun Coast at Tampa Bay Downs, and, and then her second place finish. I thought certainly Secret Oath was best, but 
she was a good second. She's always uh, struck me as a horse who wants a distance. So why not consider Ness? Because I think her three performances this year uh, match up reasonably well against uh, this field. You know, maybe uh, Mo Donegal's best, uh, maybe We the People's Peter Pan, maybe Keen Ice's Derby are, are, are a little bit better than she's ever run, but it's 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 arguable at least that she's run races in the Ashland, the Kentucky Oaks that make her very competitive. And if she's the one who wants 12 furlongs here, we know Todd Fletcher knows how to win the Belmont. Uh, she could be a real threat. Uh, it, the pedigree, the pedigree geek in me versus the more uh, rational side uh, wonders how much pedigree matters these days in a 12 furlong race. But Ethereal Road, for for instance, Quality Road out of a Warfront mare, I I'm not crazy for that 12 furlong breeding. But Nest is a daughter of Curlin out of a stakes winning or Grade One producing. Uh, AP Indy mare. So you could argue that no one is is as well bred for 12 furlongs, uh, or she's certainly one of the best on a pedigree front. So Nest, interesting long shot here in the Belmont, Barber Road, Ethereal Road as well. You saw our top contenders list. Uh, I, I think I'm starting to lean away from the Belmont uh, favorite a little bit, Matt, and a little bit more to Kenny McPeak's creative minister. But we'll see. We still have nine days to go before the Belmont. Should be an interesting race. How about a little bit more from you from those two lists that we produced today? Yeah, we'll know more uh, uh, for our show next week. Certainly the draw is scheduled to happen on Tuesday. And, and we'll have the field finalized. And the horses should be up in New York by then. We'll take a look at it. But again, it looks like we've got a big four in this race um and nest kind of in there uh nestled in there at the top of the longer shots um it's an interesting race maybe it's a hard race to handicap for the reasons that you were talking about brian with horses coming from so many different uh races with so many different schedules under their but under their belts i think at best um you're no matter who you choose you got going to have a lot of question marks about your horse. Yeah, yeah, every every single one. Certainly, the seven we mentioned. Obviously, the four that we didn't really talk about much this week. Those, those they, they they have the most questions heading into Belmont Stakes. But the seven we talked about. There's some positives to all of them. There's certainly some negatives to all of them. So uh, it, it very well could be an interesting betting race. The Belmont Stakes, uh, nine days away, Matt. You, last week we talked about the Met Mile and 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 Flightline maybe having his biggest test yet off a long layoff, but we really need to talk about the Ogden Phipps a little bit because we got two champions headed to the Ogden Phipps, Matt. And in recent years, the Ogden Phipps has become a very big race. We saw it last year when Latruska won it. That was kind of the uh, uh, turning point in her season to 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 show that she is really the top older mayor, mayor, uh, mayor in the country last year. And this year should face another champion in Malathot. And uh, I'm getting pretty excited about the thought of this $500,000 grade one race on the Belmont Stakes undercard of mile 16th, Latruska versus Malathot. Early thoughts from you, sir. Hey, you know, I, I just think back, we've seen, seen so many races of uh, like a top two uh, uh, Phillies matching up in big races and, and and this is certainly one of them i mean you summarize it really well when you say we've got the champion older female and the champion three-year-old filly from last year matching up but boy think about their records uh brian latruska has won eight of her last 10 races um she's two for two this year um we know that her we know about her running style how she likes to go to the lead and and and, and play catch me if you can uh to the to the rest of the challengers and and now here we've got Malathot, four years old uh, uh, a little bit more of an off the pace runner but but look at look at her record also seven wins from nine in her career with a second and a third uh, she was third in the breeders cup this staff last year latruska as we know uh uh, had a disappointing 10th in that Breeders' Cup. Uh, Malathot you know, came back with a, you know, a, a very impressive victory uh, at Keeneland in a grade three. 
it, it looks like these two champions from last year uh, are back in their back in really good form and are ready to roll. Yeah, and why wouldn't they be in really good form, Matt? Latruska, you, you talked about a record a little bit. She's actually 19 of 25 lifetime. I, you know, many of those came in Mexico, but she has been a force in America. Obviously, she was an easy choice as the Eclipse of Winner, Eclipse Award winner last year's Best Older Mare. She's got the speed. She's won this race before, and I think it's her advantage is that speed in this mile and 16th matchup of champions with Malathot. But on the other hand, Malathod, you said seven of nine lifetime. Yeah, and she she hasn't run a bad race ever. She's she's nine for nine and running very good races because even those two losses, her narrow third place finish in the Breeders' Cup and and a, and a narrow loss at Saratoga were also very good performances. A daughter of Curlin out of Dreaming of Julia, bred to the absolute hilt. Uh, they're both undefeated this year. Malathod in that double dog there at uh, Keeneland and Latruska with those two wins won a golf stream in the Royal Delta, and then a, again, a grade one in the Alpha Blossom where she repeated there. So just a wonderful showdown between two champions. What more could you ask? That'll be a fun race. Folks, that's it for this week's Horse Center. We'll, of course, be back next week talking more Belmont Stakes and more Belmont Stakes card as well. Don't miss it. If you haven't yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel here on Horse Racing Nation, please subscribe now. Turn on those no notifications for Matt and I. We appreciate it. Matt, can I get a party shot from you, my friend? Absolutely, Brian. We're excited about the Belmont Stakes, the undercard. Hey, I want to thank you, Horse Center fans. I want to thank so, so, so many of you that watched the show last week. Uh, uh, Brian and I really appreciate it. And, hey, we'll be back next week. I think we'll do the show on Wednesday next week, Brian. For That's the plan, Matt. Okay, excellent to have plenty of time to uh, uh, get our final thoughts together for the test of the champion. Excellent, excellent, my friend. Thank you to our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. And as Matt said, thank you for watching each and every week. We sure do appreciate it here on Horse Center. We'll see you right here back next week.